Welcome to Tiffin Box TV. I'm your host, Sei Shu. I speak with photography industry leaders who make it a habit of inspiring others, bridging craft and commerce to help you create a sustainable and creative business. Today's guest is Simi Joyce, a food photographer based in Chicago. Her work has been featured on MSN, Fox News Magazine, Adobe Premium Collection, Better Homes, The Kitchen, and she's a frequent contributor on the Daily Mail. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. Simi, uh, you know, I'll be honest with you. The first time I saw your work, my jaw just dropped uh, uh, for two reasons. Number one, the photography was phenomenal. But the second was you make food photography look really delicious. Let's talk about the second part of it. Uh, how do you make food photography so delicious? That's, I think, such a difficult question to answer. Food is so temperamental. I call it my supermodel because you know it need touches retouches the colors have to be perfect i think it's just the light once you get used to reading the light and how the food reacts to a particular light i think it then the food that makes uh, food photography uh, stand out or beautiful appetizing so you say you, you you were gonna say that food. I mean, your basic premise is that if you have the light right, the food looks right. Is that fair enough? Absolutely. Okay. So yeah. Uh, but there's there's a there, looking at your work. There's a mm -hmm. there's a component of it that seems very stylized as well. I mean, these aren't these are these aren't dishes that just sort of uh, organically appeared in front of you. You've you've set it in in a specific way. You've Absolutely. made sure. It certainly looks that particular way. Where did you learn, I guess, your sense of style when it comes to food? Uh, I grew up in a house where art is, uh, was the mainstream because my mom is an artist and my father used to call himself an artist and uh, he used to dabble in sketching, but my mom is really an artist. So I've grown up with uh, oil colors, threads, colors all around me. So probably, you know, somewhere when you're growing up in a household like that, you get a sense of color, balance, light, you know. So though I've never had a formal training, but somewhere I think it has influenced me and I've always had this penchant to create something. I have dabbled a lot in pastels, oils, watercolor, but I think I found my passion in photography. So that's where it comes from. Fantastic. Let's rewind a little bit. Tell me, tell us a little bit about your your journey to photography, your journey into photography. How did it get started? I mean, I know you've got a you've got a background in marketing and branding, and you you you've, before we started recording, you said you were in that world for about 20 years, and then you made this jump to photography. Uh, first of all, how, and secondly, why? Firstly, it was 20 years ago, and I was in the world only for two years. Oh, okay, marketing okay, I got that then. wrong, all right. Yeah, so um, I got my marketing degree, and I was working for an ad agency. Everything was good. I was doing media planning, so number crunching, and not so much creative. So probably somewhere I felt I was missing that. And then um, motherhood happened, and I just wanted to stay home and enjoy that. And over the years, I would sketch or do something in art, but never felt really satisfied. But three, four years ago, or maybe five years ago, I started doing photography and food because I just love to cook. So I didn't want to go out of the house and uh, to exotic location and uh, do landscape. I just wanted to do day-to-day -day common things and you know call it art. So that's how it started. And uh, probably, uh, you know, it just, I just fell in love with it. Everything else, I used to do portrait. Uh, I used to photograph uh, portraits for a while, just for a few months. I, I don't know, I just didn't feel, you know, so comfortable doing that. And food was something that uh, I just connected to. Just the ingredients, the colors, the texture, and there's another component, aroma. I'm always trying to bring out the aroma in a still. You know what I mean? Interesting. Wow. So okay. It's, um, it's just challenging. So if it's a cup of coffee bean, I want the viewer to feel that uh, it's right there and he can smell it. Awesome. So I keep trying to do that. And of course, the light, 
and more than the light, the dark portion, the shadows, they just attract me no end. It's not so much about the light falling on the object, but the shadow that creates the depth uh, that makes the you know photograph unique. Fantastic, excellent. So uh, again, I mean, I think you, it's, it's your it's your background, it's your upbringing in in a in a sort of very artistic household that maybe um, helped your sensibilities more True. than anything else. Uh, as you progress, though, do you have other photographers that you either refer to or are inspired by uh, at this time? Other food photographers or other photographers in general? Oh, all the time. All the time. I look at works of people and I think, you know, uh, there's so much, the journey is so long and there's so far to go. There's so much beautiful work out there. And if you look at Renaissance paintings, I'm really deeply inspired by them and you look at photographers, I mean, there's such amazing work. I can't take one name, it'll, it'll, it'll be unfair. So I have a whole list on yeah. Google Docs, you know, people I admire. Awesome, awesome, great. Uh, you mentioned uh, being inspired by Renaissance artists and, and obviously Renaissance artists were, were, were known for their lighting, right? Absolutely. Uh, known for their, their sensibility to light more than anything else. And it sounds like that that's a good fit for you. What has challenged you though? What has challenged you with food photography so far? To make the setting look natural. Okay. To make it look, it's not styled. To okay. make it look like it's just, has it ever happened to you that you're sitting in a place and you look at the light falling on maybe a cup of coffee you're drinking mm -hmm. and there's little clutter out there, but everything looks so artistic and perfect. Mm -hmm to make a, a still look like that, you know, like it's just from real life, not uh, styled and staged. What do you, and, what, uh, what do you suppose that might, that might help you and other photographers who are considering that same approach to food mm -hmm. photography? What would you think might help them achieve that goal of making it look natural and making it look still very delicious? I think observation and believe it or not, I'm such a stalker when I'm in restaurant, I'm constantly looking at people, how they hold the spoon, where they keep it, how the place, uh, you know, plate is kept. I love it. Because that's how you know how natural it is. Yes. Because if you're doing a photograph and you're holding the spoon like this, yeah. that's awkward. You have to hold it where it's comfortable to the hand. Right. So I'm constantly stalking and looking. And when I'm in kitchens of people's homes, I'm looking how they've kept the things, you know, to make it look uh, natural because there's no other way you can do that. Awesome. Awesome. So I guess power of observation. I mean, you're always looking at how, how yeah. things look in real life and perhaps yes. bringing them back to your your setting, your home setting, right. where you, you set up these, these beautiful and really amazing uh, looking food arrangements, um, dishes. Um, let's talk about one of the, one of my favorites that you've sent is a, a dish of blueberries and and it's got I think um, some leaves on it. Can you tell us a little bit about the this photograph that uh, that I think just sort of is so punchy and so beautiful. Uh, how did you how did you see? I mean, do you, is it, is it just a simple shot of uh, a, a you know a a basket full of blueberries or is it something more for you? You know, that photograph has an interesting story because I was uh, shooting a desert at that time and it required blueberries and mint and mint. the leaves are, I think, mint. So uh, I had this box of blueberries and had a few mint leaves on them just scattered and I was shooting and I turned back and it was kept on the chair and I looked at it. I was like, wow, look at that light. So I rearranged the mint so that they look a little more appealing. Mm -hmm. And that's it, took a you know, top-down shot, yeah. cropped it, and I, did, I didn't do anything much to that. It was just so beautiful as is. Right. Are, are most of your clients, are, are I'm assuming you're working for some folks who are interested in having their food fo photographed. Uh, mm -hmm. is, that the, is that the case? Are you actually working yeah, as a I food do. photographer now full-time? Yeah. Yeah, I do that. Yes. Excellent. And mm -hmm. when 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 they ask you uh, when they ask you to come in or to photograph their food or if you are or do they come to you to your home to have with their food? What is the usual what's the usual scenario? 
usually no i've never had anyone come home for okay. that but i've usually had uh, people mail me their stuff a whole lot from produce to spices to coffee to um to packed food with with the recipe attached to it since i cook as well and detailed instructions on Fantastic. Uh, wow. you know, how they want it uh -huh. so that's how uh, it's worked till now and uh, they usually give me a a rough um, idea on how they want the final um, image to look like and i usually send them five or six options and kind of hint on something that i like more and uh, then have them go with that excellent excellent so you keep busy uh, you know creating these um th these wonderful photographs of food and and dishes for your clients and obviously, after you cook it, you get to eat it. Yes, I That's do. the bonus, right? Yes, it is. <laughs> Especially fresh produce. I'm the happiest if I have, you know, fresh produce coming, organic tomatoes, and they're just so delicious. I'm like so happy shooting them and eating them, and it's good. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Uh, well, from one gourmand to another, I have to say that, you know, this work, this body work that you've shared with us, uh, is truly, truly delicious. I mean, it's really amazing. Uh, I'll be sharing some of these or most of these with my audience. Um, what in particular uh, would you say excites you the most about food photography? Playing with light. Okay. Um, when you're shooting landscape, basically you have, a, of course you still play with light, but you have a set scene you have the direction of light. You can't change much. You can't go 360 degrees and invert the image or take a top-down image. But with um, you can't do that in portrait either, though you can play with light a lot more than you can do in landscape. But with um, food and still life, you have a lot of options. You have so much you can play around with. You can change the elements. You can move them around style-wise. Mm -hmm. And with light, you can uh, block a whole lot of light and make it completely moody or overexpose the image, add a little bit of uh, reflectors everywhere and make it completely uh, you know, overexposed dramatic image. So that's what that really excites me as to how uh, you can literally mold light to like a brush to create what you want to do if it's in your mind. You know? Do you use uh, artificial lights or do you essentially, you know, bring in light from a, a large window? I mean, what is it that that I that prefer kind of natural? You do, but yeah. I use a speed light when required. Okay. To fill in. Okay. And when it's from a client and they want a very flat image, and if it's in a restaurant and they don't have enough light, yeah. and I have to go in and then. Uh, fill into natural light, so I, I use speed light then. Okay, okay, excellent. Are you a Nikon, Canon, Fuji, Sony, or Olympus? Nikon, I'm a Nikon girl. All right, excellent, very nice. The uh, SB900s and 910s are amazing. I know, uh, yeah. I don't know which ones you use, but I, I'm a Nikon and a Fuji guy myself. I love using the Nikon uh, speed lights, they're fantastic. Um, Again, looking at your work, there's consistency, there's uh, there's depth in terms of the the quality of the the work. Uh, there's you know not every you've sent me I don't know about 15 images I think, and okay. every single image has something a little different about it. But you know qualitatively they're all the same. You know they're all they're all together. I love it. Um, what are you gonna do next in terms of? Uh, in terms of your career as a photographer, are you planning on just continuing to do more of the these dishes, or do you feel like at some point you might be tempted to create a book? You know, I've never thought about a book. I frankly speak, uh, think the market is so overcrowded for books about cooking and uh, food photography. Mm. So I'm, it's not something that has attracted me because I'm more of an input-driven person than an output. So I have to constantly learn. So I have to, I'm thinking of, I'm not sure I'll do it. I'm thinking of doing a course in graphic designing so it can tie with my food work. So if you have some um, lettering going on on the images, you know, I know how to use the color and you, I constantly want to learn. So I'm looking at that, I'm not sure uh, I'll do that. I've identified a few courses, so let's see you know where I go from there. Fantastic. Book, I'm not so I'm not so sure yet. Okay. 
Last question for you. Um, you know, one of the things I w I'm also inspired by when I see your work is that uh, you don't mention any other type of photography. I know you've tried portrait photography at some point and you've mentioned landscape photography at, a couple of times, but it sounds like you're settled on food photography and that seems to be your strength and your love. Uh, would, it, would you say that that's correct that on my part to yeah, make that observation? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So you've made a choice. Yeah. to choose and use or really work on one genre of photography. Is that right? Uh, absolutely. absolutely. Excellent. Excellent. Well, that's a lesson in there in it in itself, really, because I think a lot of people try and do so many things and then they say, well, I specialize in this, that and the other thing when when they really mean they're a generalist, right? You are essentially a specialist in food photography. Is that Still true? Still learning. I won't call myself a specialist. Maybe. 10 years from now, yes. Wow, I love the modesty. <laughs> <laughs> no, really, there's so much. If you see work of other photographers Absolutely. and what they're doing, it's yeah, there's mind no, there, there's no There's no limit to learning in this business. Uh, every day you learn something. Um, and being able to see and listen to people like you and see how you've just sort of transferred your skills from uh, being brought up in India in a very artistic household and bringing those sensibilities in, that love of light, uh, uh, love of cooking. I mean, that's, <laughs> I love it. So uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. Take care. Bye. Take care. Bye. -bye.